throw up. Like, oh, don't like animals. It's after work drinks in inner city Melbourne. Sweet beer. The beers are flowing, but in this circle of friends, the drug of choice can be harder. Ice is, a, is an effective stimulant that makes you feel like you've just had a good night's rest. It uh, makes you feel awake, alert, very happy to talk to people, um, dance. Really any endeavour that you, that you have, you can do it because you're, you're well stimulated. I know lawyers and I know teachers and I know vets and I know all these people. There's plenty of like white collar ice use as well. David's not the sort of ice user we normally see. He's a social worker, a student, and he also works at festivals assisting drug affected party goers. The first time I had ice, I was at a 60th and I smoked it with the birthday boy. The 60 year old? A 60 year old, out of a wine glass. We heated a wine glass and smoked ice out of a wine glass. It was very civil. And we partied for the evening. It was a bunch of friends, his friends. I was making cocktails. It was a really delightful time. You know, I've only taken it a handful of times in like you know, a decade. Yeah, it's not something you kind of, at the end of every week, you're like, oh, I've got to go get some more. Yeah. Shit, shit, I want to do that again. I want to yeah. do that again. And it had a purpose at a point in time. Yeah. David says plenty of his workmates used ice to work and play hard. In my old work, which was an office job, you'd go out with friends and someone might use it. And they did, and that was about it. It's a utility thing. Um, just, as, I mean, that's why it's kind of used in the white, in the white collar sector. The spike in these new users has largely been overlooked, but police and rehab services are dealing with the consequences. It wouldn't be uncommon for us to say have an executive in here who's used cocaine over a number of years, managed and been successful within that, but now finds himself or herself injecting ice. And this is where the problems really escalated to. We have anecdotal and, and, and real information to suggest that it, it is broad spread use across the community. We have uh, information in relation to uh, professional people uh, using the drug and in a so-called recreational sense. That's backed up by research that shows the vast majority of ice users take the drug infrequently. By far, the majority of people who use meth are fairly light users, so they use less than once a month. About 70% of people who use meth use less than once a month. The trouble with ice is that it is far more potent, far more dangerous, far more addictive than any previous illicit drug. It's, uh, it's worse than heroin, it's worse than cocaine, it's worse than LSD. The Prime Minister is taking the threat seriously and has announced an ice task force. Ice is incredibly addictive and acts so fast that you're, you're addicted to ice virtually with the first smoke or injection or however you use it. However, the hyperbolic language has law enforcement and researchers worried that young people in particular will stop listening to health warnings. One of the problems that myths like that cause is Say a young person um, sees somebody who's used methamphetamine and they don't become hooked on it, then the stories that are being provided to them by the media are seen as false. And so the information becomes non-credible anymore. What is true is that it's an easy fall from occasional use to deadly addiction. Last month, a former Australian government solicitor pleaded guilty to supplying ice. What a fall from grace that is. A solicitor in the legal fraternity being involved in the sale and distribution of ice. Now, if that doesn't warn people that there's a, such a fall waiting for them, uh, nothing else can. The head of the New South Wales drug squad, Tony Cook, fears middle class users are risking similar consequences. Those will be the end results. We know that. Um, it fries your brain and that's you know, you can put that as plain as day. Yeah, well, welcome to, welcome to treatment. Well done for making the commitment.
It's estimated 10 to 15 per cent of ICE users will become dependent, and rehab centres like Sydney's South Pacific have seen once high functioning users hit rock bottom. We see all types of clients come through the hospital, uh, but I'd suggest you know there is ICE use and ICE dependency in the executive clientele. Clinic workers say an occasional habit can quickly snowball to heartbreaking addiction. I guess what we see more closely is the absolute devastation that it causes in the family home and uh, the abandoning of children, the abuse of children, um, neglected spouses, uh, financial ruin, bankruptcy. Big wave surfer and former world champion Tom Carroll has ridden the wave from occasional use to overwhelming obsession. It started as a way of getting through the day. Uh, that's pretty much why I went for it. You know, something that sort of helped me kind of be up uh, and, and cope with uh, an overwhelming situation that I felt that I was in at the time, uh, both from a family point of view um, and from a career point of view. Um, um, just about every angle uh, I felt overwhelmed in and that actually helped me kind of get over that hump. Uh, it wasn't me um, that started to emerge. It was someone very angry, uh, someone uh, who was toxic, um, someone um, who was falling apart emotionally and trying to hold up. Someone eventually um, had everything, was so close to having everything taken away from him that, um, and I was lucky to get help at the right time and be open to it. Tom Carroll has a warning for others dicing with methamphetamines. Just know that it, they're treading on thin ice, literally thin ice. It will be a taker. It will be your greatest taker. It will take everything. Now in his mid-50s, Tom Carroll is happy in recovery and is back taking on some of the world's deadliest waves. He welcomes the government's focus on ice and hopes speaking out will stop others taking the risk. I think it's a great, a great idea to have attention uh, and not to turn away from it. It can tear whole communities apart. Uh, it doesn't just tear the family, but the ripple effect just goes right out into the community. Uh, and uh, it just destroys us uh, from the inside out.